but then let's let's start with this uh, pre uh, cma part so the whole cma revolves around the financial statements so can any, anybody tell me what do you mean by financial statement does anybody have an idea so oh, the one who did the 12th recently oh i am i just forgot the name oh was it uh, was it himanshu so himanshu can you just unmute yourself yes, sir. help me with the answer what do you understand by financial statement do you have any idea of it can you make a wild guess like anything anything what comes to your mind so shruti has given me an answer here she says that the balance sheet of the company income statement balance sheet and cash flow statement so which says balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement okay anybody else who wants to give it a try any random answers i just want random answers i don't want specific answers just be as random as you can anyone that shows the financial position of the company okay that is that is also correct so financial statements shows the financial position of the company simple which shruti has mentioned here so that is a perfect answer but now the question is how are you going to make the financial statements okay so for making the financial statements it is important that you have an accounting system in place and once you have the accounting system in place you should be aware of the rules regulations and standards which affect your accounting system okay so before continuing let me just draw a quick flow chart what exactly is going to happen is this is your ceo of the company at the very top you scroll down then there is a management accountant the cma us cma us wants the financial statements financial statements are based on accounting accounting and financial policies how does accounting and financial policies are derived or how does accounting work it depends upon the rules regulations the standards so the first thing which you need to understand is what cma is going to teach you is cma is going to teach you this portion of it from financial statement to the ceo but it is not going to teach you how the basic accounting works it is not going to teach you how the journal entries work because that is something which is expected from you. okay so when you talk about accounting and financial things it is very important to understand the accounting process now so we wanted to do accounting we wanted to know the rules but before understanding that we need to understand how an accounting process works okay so let's understand that so a uh, accounting process starts with invoices so whenever a company does a transaction maybe a sale maybe a purchase maybe a kind of a ag aggregated purchases like bulk purchases bulk sales whatever they do whatever financial transaction they do they usually have an invoice for that so that is the base for your accounting transactions okay i know this is very basic 
but then let's let's stick to the process so let's assume that you are owning a restaurant so let's assume that uh, let me check who is there okay so so let's assume himanshu owns a restaurant he is an owner of mcdonalds so himanshu can you tell me what kind of uh, sale and purchases you do when you when you assume mcdonalds as your as your business do you have any idea sir raw materials like uh, breads vegetables okay breads vegetables and what do you sell so this is your purchases right you purchase all these things for a for a mcdonald or a burger business and what do you sell is a completed burger right yes sir so what is going to happen when you are going to do this sale and purchase over the period of time there would be some financial transactions which would be happening throughout the day throughout the month throughout the year and every financial transaction would have an invoice once you have an invoice in place you need to record that invoice when you need to how do you record that invoice you have certain rules for that what are those rules those are rules with respect to the journal entry once you pass a journal entry or once you make a journal entry is kind of a recording system journal entry is kind of a recording system once you have that recording system in place based on the rules you can easily make out your ledger so i'll define these concepts later on just give me a few minutes once you have a ledger in place there is something called a trial balance once a trial balance is in place there is something called financial statements which get prepared so this is the accounting process which every organization has to follow whether it whether it be a small organization with a sole proprietor whether it may be a partnership firm whether it may be a company like reliance maybe apple microsoft everybody follows this process everybody based on the rules rules so you need to understand what are those rules so and what is the purpose of accounting can anybody tell me what is the purpose of accounting why do we this do this accounting i mean what is the purpose what is the primary purpose of accounting does anybody have an idea shruti can you tell me pooja shivam tanya can you help me out with this what is the purpose of accounting Do you have any idea of that? So accounting is uh, about keeping track of all all the financial transactions, like uh, what's yes. coming and what goes out. Like it's a record a detailed uh, like detailed record keeping system that uh, helps you. Correct. Agree. Absolutely correct. Tracking the financial information that is correct. Yes. Uh, anybody else wants to add add something to it? It is useful. Yeah, sorry, Shyam. Go ahead. Go ahead, Shyam. It is useful for the business organization. Uh, they have easily make a decision on it whenever they are getting a loss and whenever they are getting a profit. It will be very helpful for to decide the when we have to put a right decision to increase the profit of the company. Right. So, Shyam. Okay. So, Shyam, you said that there is a you 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 have this word decision making. in your uh, in your answer so now if i tell you you need to pay me 5000 bucks tomorrow will you pay me i'm asking you for a 5000 bucks will you be able to pay me tomorrow not sir why you can pay me because are you maintaining an accounting system for it uh before making uh, before me, before making the payment i look at my uh, accounting transaction whether i have the funds available funds 
you cannot just keep on spending and receiving the money without having a record of it because what is going to happen in a business like mcdonalds there would be multiple suppliers who would be supplying the raw material to the company so let's assume that if there is macd and there are multiple suppliers and if for example let's assume that mr sharukh khan is one of the suppliers to mcdonalds okay so srk is a supplier to mcdonalds and now srk is saying that look i submitted you 100 kg of potatoes for your french fries i need dollar 30000 that is due from you will mcdonald pay it to srk because srk is saying will the mcdonald pay to it the answer is no i think the mcdonald should not pay it because what mcdonald should do is it needs to analyze what are the transaction it happened between srk and mcdonald and how are they going to analyze those transaction is by making the journal entries the recording of it so they'll tell srk look you are saying that we need to pay you 30000 bucks wait on let's let's take a pause here what we are going to do is we are going to check our records as well we are not just going to pay you because you are saying it if that record tally then probably we'll move on and initiate a payment and that is a reconciliation tool which you require so that's why you need to record each and every invoices through a journal entry you prepare a ledger what is a ledger ledger is a account that is going to show you all the transactions related to a specific part okay ledger is going to tell you what kind of a specific transactions you had with the particular party so when i am going to check when i when an srk is asking me to pay him 30000 dollars what i am going to do in my records i am going to open his ledger and i am i am really going to, i would be checking what are the entries i have put in here and what is the final balance there could be a chance that we have already paid him an advance of say 10000 dollars so now we are supposed to pay him only 20 so how i am getting this information is because of this accounting records okay and how do i record it is through this journal entry and it then goes to the ledger and then if i want to look okay this is the case with srk now there could be salman as well coming in there could be amir as well coming in and asking me for their money do i have a consolidated list of all those people to whom i want to pay the money from whom i want to receive the money is there a consolidated list of all the expenses which i have made and all the incomes which i have earned is there any consolidated list like that the answer is yes and that list is called as trial balance so it's a trial balance balances the list of balances and then based on the final balances which you have you create a report a mis report which is called a management information system report which is a financial statement including your balance sheet your profit and loss account a cash flow statement and your notes to account so that is the requirement of an accounting system because you cannot just keep on trusting people so in in finance there is a uh, there is a word called don't trust people trust your books trust your financial transactions don't trust the people because people might be fooling you so once you have this in place once you have all the recording in place then your financial statements are ready and once your financial statements are ready then comes a management accountant 
to analyze and give his opinion do an analysis on the financial statement give all sorts of a judgments on the financial statement discuss it with the management and that's the actual point where in the management accountant works starts to a certain extent maybe he can help in the preparation of the financial statement and then probably do an analysis later on but that's kind of a, a flow which happens and you can now exactly understand each one of you based on your different backgrounds at what point do you stand and at what point you want to reach so there would be some people who are not doing any kind of a or any kind of a work or any kind of a job so they probably will have to start with understanding the invoices this recording and all this kind of a process there would be some people who have already done this who have got a decent experience in life who have done their post graduation they understand how these things work the, what they want to concentrate is on the financial statements the core financial statement so that's the thing which you guys will have to understand at what point of the funnel you are placed in and once you decide that you should be able to get it through so what uplift is doing is uplift is providing you a entry right here on your financial statement part with a professional course that is cma us what it is also doing is the person who has not done any kind of a job who doesn't have any experience who wants to gain some kind of basic understanding of the things they are also giving you the service so there would be a basic thing plus the professional thing so that is why it is called a pre cma classes so now you would be in a better position to understand at what point you belong and where you want to go and depending upon uh, this kind of a analysis you can take your decision whether you want to join the pre cma part you want to be in pre cma or and also be in the cma you just want to have a basic understanding of the things that's that's what you can decide now okay so um let's move on uh, let's start with some kind of a journal entries first so journal entry was one of the recording tools of the financial statements and to prepare a financial statement you require a journal entry and it is a recording tool okay and journal entries have rules these are universal rules okay so what universal rules means is that even if you go to us even if you go to the uk you go to australia singapore any place all across the globe the rules would be same okay so what they do is whenever there is a financial transaction you need to identify what are the two important elements which are affecting the transaction okay so for example let's let's take a, a example that uh, srk purchased a mobile phone okay for say dollar 2000 okay so this transaction what does it, this transaction signify that there is a person called srk who has purchased a phone and that's the price okay so you need to understand what kind of a elements this transaction is affecting so what are the keywords let's let's understand the keywords so it's srk the name of the person purchased is something which is signifying what he is doing mobile phone is something which signifies what he has purchased and this is the value 2000 is the value of the of the product so 
once you identify this so you don't want this the other words the the conjunctions you don't want now what you do is before understanding this there is one more thing which you need to understand is accounting has two elements to it one is a debit and the other one is a credit okay you might have studied this in your bachelor's or something but then i'll just brush it up over so debit and credit basically work like a plus and the minus sign in mathematics okay so if debit is added to debit it is debit so it's basically like plus 10 plus 5 is equal to 50 okay then if a credit is added to the credit it becomes a credit again it's again the same thing it's either plus 10 plus 5 becoming 50 or minus 10 Minus five becoming minus fifty. In any case, the figures are going to add up. That's what my point is. But when there are negative signs to it, whenever there is a mathematically negative sign to it, say for example, ten minus five. So ten is positive, five is negative. The answer would be plus five because positive sign is on the higher side. That's why if you have a debit and a credit involved in a transaction. the net effect would be a reduction always same as we do in mathematics so even if it is like credit and debit again the reduction would be negative and which sign will it have is the one which have the higher importance either a debit or a credit depending upon the transaction so you might have seen this debit and credit in your original bank statement right so so there is a transaction there are rules for debit credit let's understand what are the rules for debit credit quickly so there are three rules uh, one is for your personal account whenever there is a personal involved you need to apply this rule whenever there, there is another rule called with real account specific to your banking transactions and bank payments and then there is a nominal thing which is primarily related with your all expenses and incomes personal is related with a person so what does this rule say to you is whenever it is a personal account you need to debit the party who is the receiver and you need to credit the party who is the giver of that thing okay then there is a real account which says debit what is coming in and you credit what is going out then there is a nominal account which says you need to debit an expense or losses and you need to credit all the income and gains but then what you want to so this is the nature the expense income in out this is the nature but you need to understand what you need to debit or a credit so for that we'll just come back to our own transaction it says srk purchased a mobile phone for 2000 let's put it as cash just to uh, kind of make it simple so what i'll do is i have identified a few important words there which is srk which is purchase which is cash which is dollar 2000 so you need to identify those keywords first and then start making a journal entry 
So SRK is a person purchases an expense cash is something which is coming is which is going out and 2000 is the value of that transaction so here what the journal entry would be it's it's a mobile phone expense okay by looking at the nature of the transaction you try to sum up the transaction within a few words so srk purchased a phone for 2000 cash can be sum up into srk purchased a phone or it's a expense for phone so expense is something which is going to affect you in terms of your cash balances. So it, it would be mobile phone, the mobile expenses debit to cash account. So cash is going out. Cash is a real account. That's why it says real account is going out. Mobile phone is the nature of expense. So if I write SRK account to cash account, because SRK was again one of the parties to it. Try to interpret the transaction, what it says. So SRK is a person and person is getting debited. Okay. What does that mean? If it's some, if it is a personal account and it is getting debited. It means you need to receive that much amount from that person. Now understand the transaction and tell me, does it make sense? It doesn't make sense because SRK has paid the money for it. How would you be receiving it from him? So the nature of transaction eliminates this party. Now you're only left with these three elements 2000 was your value so that is not to be included so you have got purchase and cash so why did we not write purchase and why did we write mobile because when the purchase is to be used when i am purchasing it for my regular business activity and if it is it is a non recurring kind of an expense i'll put it into that category of expense so that's why the entry is not replaced by purchase account debit to cash it has been replaced with cash, uh, mobile account debit with cash. So once you make these entries and once you start putting all the journal entries in one place, that is something called is called as a day book. That is called as a day book. Day book has all the journal entries into it. So it would be day. So there would be a date here. So for example, 9th of June. There would be transaction again 9th of June. There would be transaction 9th of June again transaction 10th of June again a few transactions written over one by one. You keep on writing the transaction that creates your day book. Okay, once you have a day book in place, you can move on to your ledger accounts. So, ledger account is something which creates a kind of a bifurcation between your journal entry. So the journal entry which we passed before uh, this was mobile account debit to cash account. So which are the two accounts getting affected here is mobile and cash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly make the ledger for it. So ledger is, is, is like in a T format or it could be in a like a horizontal format as well depends upon uh, what kind of a system you are using traditionally we have got a t format the left hand side of the t format is called debit side this is called as credit side in the horizontal format the first column is called debit the other one is called as credit in the in the t format there is a space in between to write the name so you can just put in the name as cash in the vertical format also you have the name to put in you can just put in cash then what you do is you record this transaction so how do you record it you're debiting mobile account and crediting cash account so you have two accounts involved so let me make another account which is uh, like mobile account 
again it's a debit and a credit so what is happening is mobile account is getting debited that means you need to write the amount in the debit side of the of the account right here and cash account is getting credited so you need to write it on the credit side of the account so it's 2000 that's the value you write it here and then what you do is you write the opposite names so if, if it is a cash account you write the name of mobile then you have to write two by all those kind of things but i'm not going into that that basic but it, it would be mobile account and here it would be cash it, it's like the reverse name you need to put in so this is the journal entry mobile account debit to cash and then this is your ledger entry into the box of account so so once this is done there's another step which is called as trial balance after this so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you close these accounts and carry forward all the balances to the trial balance once you have the trial balance in place based on the trial balance you prepare the balance sheets and the profit and loss account so this is how the concept is going to work and whenever there's a balance sheet and profit and loss account uh, going to uh, be prepared there would be a, a professional who would be overseeing it so there would be an audit for it there would be a management consultant there would be a cost management accountant there would be a costing accountant there would be a acca there would be a cpa all those people basically want the pre the preparation of the balance and the profit and loss account to do an analysis of it okay but apart from that uh, what you need to understand is when you prepare those financial statements you work on multiple concepts and these concepts are actually very important whenever you like when you are doing a CMA or a kind of a professional course, does anybody know that what is the meaning of a going concern? Does anybody have an idea what does going concern mean? The concept of going concern. So what we do is business is expected to run for a for a long period correct so what we are expecting is we are expecting the business to keep on running for further years we are not expecting that the business will close down okay so who is going to make a decision that the business is going to run or business is going to close this year it's the management accountant who decides based on the financial record and the financial statement that's why going constant concept is the basic assumption of account. We don't expect the business to close down. Okay. Then there is a concept of materiality. So what do you mean by materiality? Does anybody have an idea on that? The concept of materiality. Any random guesses? Okay, so materiality means that recording relevant transactions. Uh, probably yes, to a certain extent. Yes, recording relevant. So basically what we are doing is we are identifying the relevance. Okay, so let me give you an example here. You go to a, you go to a sea, a ocean near the near a beach, and what you do is you take a mug of water from the beach, a bucket of water from the from the sea, and throw it away. So how many tons of water is left in the sea? If you go to the beach, you take a bucket, you fill it with water of the sea, and you throw it away. So how many tons of water is left in the sea? Can anybody, can anybody calculate that? Whosoever calculates it gets a reward now. 
can you can can you calculate it then how many how many tons of water is left it cannot be determined yes it cannot be determined correct because the ocean is so big and when it when you compare a bucket of water with it it's it's hardly relevant doesn't make any sense so that's what materiality defines what is the relevant proportion of a transaction so if the if, if you find a error if you find a misjudgment as a management consultant of said dollar 1 on a sale of say 100000 so how much relevancy does it provide in to it do you want to deep drill you want do you want to deep uh, deep into it do you want to grill this just trying to find out what is the reason for that 1 dollar mismatch no you're not supposed to do that because you have much much better things to do you already have an analysis for it you know that this is immaterial a dollar one here and there doesn't matter when you are taking a decision accounting transactions it does matter to record it accurately but when you want to make a decision your decision is not going to get changed even if this big if, even if you sort this figure out the decision is not going to get changed so that means it is immaterial for you and it is basically a case to case kind of a basis which you need to understand so then there is another concept called accuracy accuracy is something you record the transactions as per accuracy so that doesn't mean that you don't record a 1 dollar transaction you record it despite its value that is accuracy so as a management accountant you need to understand that all the financial records are accurate the the company is in a going concern stage that it is going to go for a long run and you bring in your materiality every day once this is done there are a few concepts as well like liquidation concept so liquidation is something when a going concern assumption is failing out that means you can see that the company is not going to run for a longer period of time you're going into liquidation that is you're wrapping up the company wrap up that is kind of one concept you need to understand as a management accountant winding up of the company that is correct then what also you need to understand is is what kind of a errors are made by accountants sorry what kind of the errors are made by the accountants so because you are not the person who are who is recording the transaction you would be in a position to evaluate the transactions at a very higher level you need to understand how do you record the errors how do you rectify the errors and why the errors are happening as a management consultant you need to have an eye on that as well so errors of commission and omission yes so this happens at a very granular granular level at a very lower level when an accountant is making an entry so let's say for example the entry was supposed to be made for 2000 and accountant was in, in kind of a stress he was he was not attentive at that point he made an entry for 200 so what is what that is going to do is that is going to create a difference between your invoice amount and your recorded amount of 1800 there could be a difference there could be another entry wherein what happened was the original transaction was for 1800 he recorded it for 1800 but because he recorded it for 1800 this this error got compensated to a certain extent in terms of amount there was a chance that there was invoice number 1212 
the the accountant recorded it there should have been an invoice number 1213 which he missed out and it directly recorded an invoice which is 1214 so that is an error of omission now so error of omission error of commission commission is something committing error of omission is missing out so all these kind of error usually happens on when an accountant is making an accounting entry so as a management consultant you also have you have also would have to be sure that these kind of errors are not in the financial stream before you give a decision so you have to make sure that the financial statements are pretty much in order before you turn up and uh, give a decision to the management okay 